So welcome everybody to the Path of Tet uh, um, web class. <laughs> and uh, this, I believe, is actually our third attempt to have this class. And uh, that's pretty wild. Um, so hopefully each one of these paths is not going to get progressively harder for us to get through. Um, but yeah, I mean, th thanks to uh, generous uh, donation, I was able to get a new router. So hopefully that is going to mean that we have a good connection from here on out and actually that the recordings will be better. I'm actually using my, um, you know, uh, quasi professional grade little microphone here. Um, so hopefully everything is sounding and looking better. Um, I moved the orientation so that there's actually a light shining directly at my face, which is why I'm not as much in shadow <laughs> as I sometimes am. So everything we've improved about this uh, about this experience today. Um, so Path of Tet um, is the is the is the next one. Have people actually gone forward and and begun working with that, or are people are, are people sticking with the Path of Yoda? I, I remember um, as I was trying to read the ever ever disappearing um text screen uh, uh people were talking about um continue to work with yod since uh, there you know was a lot of work to be done there so well um even though so a few of you have moved on and started to work with tet uh, i'd like to um talk a little bit about the path of yod and people's experiences with it if you can still recall them uh <laughs> i'm uh, you know it's it seems it seems long ago at this point so um does it has anyone uh, got anything interesting that happened to them while working with the path of yod um was yod the previous one that we just did i think it was yes So, I mean, my experience with the Path of Yod for me when I just re reworked it here um, was interesting because, um, you know, I felt like in some ways it really did kind of remind me of some things that I hadn't really been thinking about for quite some time, uh, particularly since I do end up spending a considerable amount of my time holding on to babies and um, sort of uh, changing diapers and whatnot. Um, and... Uh, you know, it, it, it reminded me that uh, the path is sort of ever present with even within that stuff and that there's there isn't really a need to feel um, as if that's not path or path, you know, that it's just sort of like that's a separate category of things that I um, you know that, that the the forces of the universe have sort of um, constructed for me to work on while working on PATH. Uh, Alex says, the PATH of Yod was very powerful, but for some reason Chesed is not overpowering for me like the other Sephirot. Um, uh, now, that's interesting. Um, we're getting pretty remote with these uh, Sephirot. At this point, we're um, moving into pretty abstract space. You know, the uh, Chesed or, or Gejula is um, really that, you know, that complete, open, un, un um, restricted, pure, loving, expanding energy of the universe just sort of flowing into creation. And so um, we're not really going so much to a human place as a transhuman place. And, and that's tr true of Gibura to a large extent as well. But certainly with Chesed, we are moving, you know, I mean, this is basically the last Sephira that is below the, what they call the abyss, you know, the, um, the, the transmundane, um, you know, sphere of, of supernals. Uh, 
So the the chat board is lighting up here, so I'm going to just go ahead and read some of what you guys are, are talking about here. Um, Reminded, uh, Brendine says, reminded me of embracing the dark side of us, accepting it and knowing it was okay to be alone on this path and knowing ourselves. Yeah, and, and Tet uh, takes that a little bit further too. Um, Juan says, seeing as Yod has to do with healing, I cannot fully recall working on the path very much now, but its results, uh, that is a different th tale, having had to finish up with unresolved past conflicts. Um, Alex thought something that I said made sense. Um, Graham said, I find considerable emotional connection to the 25th path here. The temptation to give up being even greater on the 25th because it has some really scary abyss-like aspects of me, of being somehow suspended in nothingness from which there is no escape. On occasions, this has produced a kind of panic feeling like, oh my god, what have I done? Which takes some time, days even, to pass. For me so far, the 20th seems easier to... Uh, mediate because it seems to have ha to have a greater intellectual component which makes it easier to control well and certainly that's obviously that some of that might be just based on the way that i've structured the meditations um rather than inherent to the path but but to a certain extent that that may be true um just simply because um having already done the 25th path you're a little bit l less prone to feel that um agitation coming up does that make sense? Um, Juan says, many of those conflicts seem more healed as a whole. Um, Robin says, it was a very calming, balancing experience for me, as most of them have, have been this round, peaceful. Many things that normally would have upset me seemed to be less upsetting than, than when they would occur. Uh, Alex says, I'm just not evolved enough. <laughs> uh, Kevin said that he saw the gain of power on this path, a whole bunch of power in a... In a uh, little letter. Yeah, I mean, and that is that is true that ultimately you are opening yourself to an awareness of the sort of universality of your consciousness and the ability to kind of um, influence things. Uh, now, for good or ill, you know, you can you can take that um, in a number of different directions. Uh, and in fact, you know, if you read the sort of um, Proto literature of uh, you know this this kind of work, uh, this Western pathworking, Western um, rising on the plane sort of work. It, it is at this very point that we sort of decide which direction we're going to take with our career, whether we're going to continue opening up to um, universal consciousness, or whether we're going to attempt to turn our consciousness into our own sort of. Um, you know, are, are a temple of um, high ego, so to speak, and um, become what they call a, a brother of the left-hand path. Uh, so um, this is certainly that that juncture of of the path, um, and I think that with the next next path in particular, you'll see where some of the challenge comes in this particular area. Um, and that is being able to rise above what we what we are, and not just what we perceive ourselves as being, but what we truly are. Um, so great, great experiences, everybody. Is there is there uh, any? Does anyone want to say anything else? We've got a pretty full class here today. I'm glad that you all came on a day when the broadcast is actually going well. <laughs> so, before we leave the path of Yod, I just want to mention something that relates to, to what Kevin said, um, and, and to what some other people have been talking about um, throughout this course, which is what you, what you do with the energy on the way back down towards manifestation. And Yod is really, uh, particularly in Crowley's rendition of it, I'm going to see if I can find the card here, um, but you can, uh, let me just describe it in imagination um, first. You know, it's a, a, a solitary figure, here it is, who's sort of um, tending to, oh, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it very well, but he's sort of tending to um, this lamp, and he's got this um, 
seed form or this egg form uh, over here. Uh, and he's sort of, uh, you know, this is, this is what's being depicted here is really sort of the, um, the magical seed, the magical seed idea that we create when we do a uh, ritual to create something. Um, and this, and it's not really necessary for you to consciously think about this aspect of things, but this is sort of the, the spot in which we kind of craft that singleness of the of the vision as it is coming into manifestation um, and that's sort of um, kind of one of the inner essences of this path from a magical perspective uh, Brent Brendine says my word for the power is even good intentions can have poor outcomes with power and learning to use it correctly yeah and certainly um, use utilizing any kind of spiritual energy for um, purposes that are um, against what your own best interests are or the best interests of, of the path that you're going on, it does end up creating more problems than, uh, than good results. Uh, Alex is sending a link to the, to the um, hermit imagery. Juan says, the path of hell is paved with good and at times great intentions. Now here's the thing. Um, if, you are, if you are working this path accurately then this then this issue isn't really um going to come up too much because i mean the essence of it is essentially ter you know removing those things which are not path or at least allowing them to be um you know to take their proper place on the sidelines with the path at the center of things um and so uh correctly working it it's almost impossible to be doing anything negative it's more when you when you manage to kind of squeeze a, a some more of the egoic nature into the path and you know that you're working things in an in an unconstructive way that it becomes problematic so i mean the work that we've been doing together all this whole time really should be placing you in a position where um you needn't really fear that you're going to negatively work with ma magical energies because essentially you're universalizing yourself in a lot of ways um Alex says, what is the meaning of the Cerberus on the card? You know, it's, it's something that I don't really, I'm not really sure. Uh, I'm sure if you, if you looked in the book of Thoth, he would have an explanation for it. Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to pretend that I, that I know exactly why he put that there. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that it has something to do with the fact that you're sort of, um, guarding and guiding the, 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 um, the forces through um, the darkness and uh, Cerberus is the guardian of the the realm of the dead. So, you know, I, I'm I, I'm gonna I'm gonna put you on to checking that out in in uh, the Book of Thoth by Alistair Crowley <laughs> to understand what his exact uh, meaning in there. Oh, spe speaking of which, um, now I I I can't pretend that my tarot deck is is any kind of great and important thing, but. It's also something that I may that I may pu publish soon because I found a um, a source where I could do it fairly easily. Um, so uh, and and in mine, I you know my my hermit is really very simple. Um, but so I mean, look out for that if you're uh, if you're interested. Um, now, I actually have two separate sets of Trump imagery that I've created over uh, the years. You know, one is the the somewhat more sexualized um, cartoonish images that are um, in the uh, in the background of the path working things. But I also created these sort of like little, like even more cartoony New Hermetics imagery. Um, so I, I I'm probably going to end up releasing that at some point in the near future. Um, so let me just look at what other people are saying here. Uh, Brendine says universalizing ourselves makes it safer. Well, only in that you aren't you aren't trying to selfishly create um, stuff that is you know just for you, and and there's nothing wrong with that per se. But but it's more often that you're going to m mistake something that is a momentary whim with what is actually the economy of the universe whereas if you're in a more universal state you're just simply going to you know will that the universe move forward in the best possible way 
um, and that you're going to be repairing um, problems and and helping you know people who are uh, uh, hurting themselves rather than working towards you know building up false idols to yourself and so forth um, Juan says the work here has indeed prepared me much more for the accomplishment of the great work like training a boxer you must strip him bare to the core and rebuild him in such a way as as to convince the boxer that those thoughts and practices were always his very own well I, I hope that that's that that's been helpful to you um, then some people are complimenting my tarot deck that's very nice um, all right, so um, let's talk Path of Tet. Now, um, as I've said uh, a, a couple of classes ago, these classes, th these uh, these paths are actually getting simpler rather than more complex as we move along, um, because we are we're no longer really dealing with matters that pertain to you know personality flaws and so forth. We're we're dealing with more universalities, and uh, I want to say that this is. Um, just about the last one that really has anything so ever to do with the personality at all. Um, and it's a very simple path and basically just in some ways it resembles the path of the sun. And, um, that wasn't intentional on my part. It just, it just, it's the way that it, um, the way that it is. And, uh, this time you enter into the cave and actually face that which is bestial inside of yourself and um, and accept it and the this path is not so very different from um, the path of the devil um, the path of Ayn except that in this path you are rather than um, rather than simply accepting the different moral dichotomies, you are attempting to move into a place where there is no more moral dichotomy whatsoever. Um, you're just as essentially attempting to fully integrate all things in the universe into yourself without any um, distinction, per se, between those things, um, and just allowing yourself to be fully accepting of whatever happens and whatever... Um, and this isn't any, this isn't an easy path. <laughs> not, not that it's hard in the sense of, um, uh, emotionally difficult, but it's difficult in the sense that it's hard to, to really even fathom all of the aspects of it and allow it to process. Um, so, um, the, the presentation is very simple, but, uh, I want to just go over a little bit about the reasoning behind it and, um, uh, some a couple of people are saying that they're looking forward to the challenge. So good, I'm glad. Um, you know, and, and and it will continue to be a challenge even into the future. But so the um, the essence of of the of the message of this path is that while we find something unacceptable about ourselves or about other people, you know, this is this is a, this is a path of of you know withdrawing all projections. And realizing that it's all us, you know, if there's a murderer, a mass murderer, that's us. If there's, um, you know, a, a terrible accident and gory, you know, bloody mess, that's us. Um, if there are people who are um, evil or mean or um, uh, horrible, that all of that's us. There's not there's not a single part of that that isn't ourselves. Um, and accepting that and allowing that to be integrated into ourselves um, and that's a big task but the but the truth of the matter is while that stuff is held away from us that i don't want to have anything to do with that we're stuck at the level with it we can't we can't move past it in any way if you say there are things that i could never imagine myself doing you you can neither not do them, nor move past them. You're stuck at the level where they are in opposition with those things. You're stuck in a fight for the rest of your existence until you can just let them go. 
Kevin says, when being in unity with all, we become the dark as well as the light. Exactly. I mean, and, and uh, the, you know, the writers of the Bible were well aware of that. The, you know, the Old Testament, God created good and evil. There's no way to be in, in unity with the divine unless you accept that. Juan says, Monsters least we are, monsters least we become. LOL. I create the light and form the darkness. Yes. So, I mean, ultimately, this does not mean that you should go out and do mean things or do <laughs> or anything like that, but just simply that you acknowledge that those things are inherently a part of your consciousness, of your experience, and that you no longer try and resist them. You know, that it's it's okay that they exist. It's okay that, I mean, ultimately, if it weren't for shadow and light, we wouldn't be able to have this experience at all. You know, there would be no, you would not be able to see me. Um, if there, if there weren't silence and sound, you wouldn't be able to hear me. You know, there, it, it's only through there being distinctions that manifestation can even occur. But at this point, we're moving, we're, we're retro moving, we're moving before manifestation. And that's, um, that's why we must kind of integrate all of those things into ourselves and realize that in their primitive form, we are all those things. Um, Robin says, how best then to approach the integration of the dark side without allowing it to absorb, affect the person? Well, I mean, that very question um, shows the challenge that you're, that you're facing. Um, there isn't there isn't a need to concern yourself with it because if you move past both of them then there's then there's neither of them that's an issue neither good nor bad neither negativity nor positivity neither uh, violence nor peace uh, have any um, have any place in the transcendent you know so I mean it, there's not a there's no there's no you know you aren't you aren't uh, um, drawing them into yourself in order to embody them you're drawing them into yourself in order to transcend them. Uh, Kevin points out that in Genesis, it says that uh, God divided the light from the darkness. In other words, at that point, separation was created because before that, all light was existed. Um, and Robin says, ah, neutrality, understood. And Juan says, bingo, Robin. Um, Alex says, I would suggest that the dark side is always affecting us one way or the other. By accepting it, we don't become more dark. Yeah, just let it be. Um, yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, there are a lot of people who wander around in the world wanting to, um, to save people and, and, and to transform them. And if you look at their actual behavior, oftentimes they aren't behaving in a very nice way. Um, and it's because, ultimately, the very things that they're wanting to resist or they're wanting to fight have ultimate sway over them because they're in that battle with them. If they just simply accepted and just, you know, let their natural um, kindness shine forth, they'd probably actually catch a lot more, um, you know, people interested in, in what they had to offer. Uh, when, but, you know, I mean, it, we're growing out of a religious paradigm in which fear was the, the major selling point into a religious paradigm in which, um, you know, connection, joy, understanding is the, is the, the paradigm and that, and that's largely because the mystical is finally kind of becoming mainstream um uh transform them not meaning people transforming the energies yeah and there's i mean the thing is there's no there's no transforming darkness into light it's darkness you know it's just really accepting that there is darkness and light and that both are okay is the thing that you can do um, where Alex says, I think that part of the lesson of Lamed is that evil and good are merely creations of our own mentality with our karma actions. Yeah. 
And then Alex says the interaction of our mentality with our karma. Robin agrees. Um, Brendan said, would that be the path of non-action in the Buddhist sense? Um, I mean, I think that there's a couple of different paths of non-action, even in the Buddhist sense. So I would, I wouldn't necessarily want to say absolutely yes, but um, that sounds uh, about right. You know that, I mean, ultimately, uh, a lot of um, enlightenment consciousness really has to do with removing our being plugged into the various games of the psyche um, which involve um, making a lot of value judgments about other people's behaviors and even about our own behaviors uh, instead just simply being aware of the fact that that there are things flowing through existence and we are not actually those things you know <laughs> that's just they're just life they're just the processes of life and then our consciousness is ultimately not uh, um doing much of anything we're just we're just <laughs> experiencing the flow of life and including the thoughts that are flowing through our minds they flow whether we will them to or not um robin says so accept everything as it is being what it is no good evil neutrality just is yeah i mean i think that's probably the the best definition uh Alex says the path of non-action is Wu Wei, not inaction per se. Uh, Juan says, Robin, learn to remind yourself in the good or bad and remove yourself from the equation. Um, Brendan says, sounds good. Unplug and value judgments are so many, and we don't know they are there until we are confronted by things that are so far from our reality. Yeah, I mean, so while you're working the path, obviously, you know, you're going to just do the exercise uh, of the of the um, recording, but walking through life you know, try and try and notice those things that are repellent to you and those things that are causing you to feel um, anxious or um, filled with anxiety. And just notice what it would be like if you just accepted that. And you just said, you know, that's, that's as much a part of me as it is them. I'm not going to, you know, stand in judgment of it. Um, Alex says, actually, I think Crowley was saying the same thing with do without wilt. Every person is a star, simply move in your orbit. Yeah. Um, you know, and the thing is that the the idea that we have this um, this individuality is a very it's a very momentary thing. You know, ultimately we're all a part of the universal force, and we're all and we're all participating in it in a um, you know very automatic way, and we are you know stars flowing in an orbit, and we do have the ability to um, to mess that up you know, to do the wrong stuff, but mostly we've just sort of flow and do the right stuff. <laughs> uh, Robin says, thank you, Juan, have caught myself in what may seem negative situations and think, become aware of the situation as just being what it is. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's a kind of a popular um, uh, phrase going around where people say, it is what it is, and uh, ultimately, I don't think that that's necessarily the, the most helpful um, unless you really, unless you really understand that in a complete way, and then it is very helpful. You know, if you, if you, if you say it is what it is, that's a way of kind of like, um, uh, alienating yourself from the situation. But if you enter into the situation fully and say it is what it is, and I accept it really the way that it is, then you're, then you're moving, you know, towards really unifying things. Um, hold on a second, a bunch of people wrote something here. Brendan says, to be able to interact with people that do things that are so far from our reality, I find it challenging to know how to address people in other realities. Awkward. Uh, and Juan says, we are connected at the core. Thus, in saving yourself, you are saving me and everyone around you. Not in a selfish sense, but really saving your true will earns each of us the right to do as well. Um, then Juan says, the dude abides, LOL. Um, Aha, it is what it is, is reflected in I am what I am, says Alex. Um, sure, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so, uh, a lot of good stuff in there. Um, Brendine says she finds it a challenge to know how to address people in other realities. And, uh, you know, I think that just it just accepting them as they are is probably the easiest thing for you to do. Um, and understand that 
you know, you know, we are we are all operating in realities, and and there are sort of, um, you know, five or six common realities that people are in, and I'm not going to delineate them all, but you know, there's there's very religious, um, fundamentalist kind of people, all the, and then there's very sort of um, atheistic. Uh, <clears throat> rational people and then they're sort of integrative like I would say all of you guys fit into the sort of integrative kind of personality where you're you know you, you've kind of evolved to the point where you can look at religion in a, and see the truth in it and yet you can also see um, other things beyond just simply the written word um, and, and there's a, a number of things in between there as well um, and it is sometimes hard to relate to someone whose worldview is is incredibly different from their own your own but at the same time the easy it the easiest thing to do is simply to just accept that in their reality what they're experiencing is true for them and to just um you know be understanding and just you know realize that 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 everything that's in your reality is also in their reality as well um even though the rules might be slightly different Well, the the thing is, Juan. Sometimes people's realities, you know, especially. I mean, I, um, you know, this is sort of a a problem with like the Ken Wilber model. But you know, um, if if we view our reality as being somehow more evolved, which uh, you know that may or may not be true, but then say a person who really is afraid of um, black cats or something like that, you know, who they genuinely think that the seeing of a black cat is going to bring them bad luck. Um, that's a that's a particular level of reality in which they're operating, and they they aren't necessarily going to feel welcome in your reality. They don't, you know, if you were to say, well, you know, I mean, that's that's something that you're that you're operating on the universe with your own, you know, mental processes, and you're creating that. That's not necessarily going to be something that someone's ready to um, process at all. Um, and so, simply. Um, you know, inviting them into your reality is not necessarily going to result in, in, um, connection. Uh, rather it might be easier to simply just, you know, acknowledge their reality as such for them and, and work with them within the construct of their reality. Uh, Robin says, fairly easy to accept their reality, yet difficult for me sometimes when they get angry with me for believing differently. Interesting when many of them try to convert me in some way, whether they realize they are trying to do so or not. Yeah, and, and this isn't just true of, of religious uh, notions either. I mean, there are lots of people who try and convert you to whatever it is that they that they think, either that um, you know that the only the only thing that's worthwhile in life is to is to make profit, or the, you know the only thing that, that you know the only thing that's that makes any sense in this world is to be an atheist, or any of those sorts of things. People are always trying to convert one another to to various ideas, and um, you know the easiest thing to do is to allow that to just integrate, you know, just to say, yeah, I mean, that, that is a part of me, <laughs> whatever they're, whatever they're, um, presenting is, is in my consciousness as much as it is in theirs. And I don't need to, um, to fight with it or fight with them, but you know, they are in their place and I'm in mine. Um, no, never make, Juan says, no, never makes you better or worse. Just simply invite them in for a cup of tea, LOL. Often I find people allow egos to challenge one another, and that is not a great way to share beliefs. Um, Brendan says, uh, expanding beyond the religious tight knot to others in other worlds, but we are learning to join our realities that are religiously taboo, LOL, and others don't want my reality. They like theirs. Yeah, and uh, Juan agrees with me. And, and um yeah, I mean, there, there's no reason that you need to worry about another person's um, notions. I mean, if obviously, if they come to your house and they have um, torches in their hands and they're going to take you to the gallows, then, you know, um, then, then it might be time to, <laughs> to uh, consider what's going on. But uh, up until, you know, with our, our, our cultural... Milu doesn't seem like it's it's heading in that direction at this time, um, although there's certainly always you know the forces of um, uh, regression are are strong and it's important to you know continue sharing and not close off your um, 
more open perspective. But at the same time, you don't you don't need to feel like it's necessary to, you know, fix everybody's problems because it really isn't. Um, and then. Uh, Okay, so Robin, I think, just grokked something important. She says, hmm, true, they are a part of my reality. Hmm. And that's exactly, I mean, it's, I mean, this is the fact. You know, if there's someone who's coming into your face and saying, you know, uh, you need to become an Amway salesman because that's the only way that you're going to make money in this world, that's a part of your reality. You, you have, you are as responsible for it as anybody else, you know, and um, you are also not responsible for it you know that both of those things can be true at the same time but you but certainly the the impulse that you have to resist or to fight or to um try and reconvert uh the person is is a part of your reality And Brendine says that she's enjoying the adventures outside of the religious bondages. Um, you know, I mean, it's 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 interesting. We, you know, we're we're in a time period um, where I feel like we've really rushed pretty fast, um, and almost I think in some ways too fast past our um, our religious backgrounds. You know, a hundred years ago, um, the idea of of people sort of putting religion behind them would have seemed foreign to most people. Although, you know, uh, 230 years ago or so when we were, you know, the, when we were sort of framing our, our country, they were already kind of planting the seeds for that in their minds. Uh, although certainly the idea of being a religious was not the norm, but, but the, but the, you know, the religions themselves were already sort of beginning to atrophy and come to pieces. Uh, but we've, we've rushed so far past that, um, you know, and some people have moved into uh, very um, negative or limited spaces as a result of that. And some people have moved um, into very exalted spaces as a result of that. And it's not, it's not our job to try and um, save those that have moved in the wrong direction or to uplift those that have moved in the right direction, but rather just to open ourselves to the direction that's best for, you know, our own evolving consciousness and to be a, you know, a light, a beacon of light for, um, for those who, who, you know, can see it and want, and want to find it. Um, but certainly, you know, accepting the fact that there are multiple worldviews and that they're all accurate in their own way is a good step in the right direction. You know, that there's there's nothing inaccurate about the person who, who views the world in, a, in an entirely magical way, you know, where everything it, it has a, a life essence to it and touching the wrong thing brings bad luck. And there's nothing inaccurate about that for that person. You know, they 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 operate in that in that worldview consistently. And for someone who has a very religious, moralistic, um, you know, uh, external uh, religion of the book kind of um, lifestyle, there's nothing inaccurate about their perspective either. Brendine said, I was so bound that it's kind of like oil and water with religion. Finding freedom and no dogma, even accepting religious symbols without the dogma is okay. So, I mean, here's the thing, Brendine, you're, you're going to be stuck at the level where you are right now until you can totally accept religious, you know, stuff for what it is without any, you know, once that oil and water has to mix, it, ha it has to no longer be an issue, or you're going to be perpetually outside of of that but that religious stuff that's just as much a part of the universe as as all the other stuff <laughs> no i mean you don't have to <laughs> you don't have uh, brendine says oh man get out of it and now i have to go back or join back um you know you don't you don't need to um change what you're doing so so much as just simply um integrate it so that it's not it doesn't become your shadow 
Um, you know, so many people who get involved in uh, Western esoteric um, magic or um, Gnostic kind of stuff or uh, occultism or witchcraft, any of those things, they end up having such a negative um, feeling towards uh, their, you know, their family of origin and their... Um, their, uh, you know, their, their early social environments in which they were raised in churches and so forth, um, that it, they, that they're stuck in this antagonistic relationship, and that stops them from growing to a complete place of, of uh, love and harmony. And, you know, it's not to say that you have to fully, you know, you have to go back and start you know, being a part of that community again, but just just accepting that they are also doing the right thing for them, and that there's nothing that needs to be um, changed per se about them. For them, you don't have to do it, but just but just accept what they're doing. Um, Juan says, "Okay, so let me go back here." Uh, Robin says, "So do we put ourselves into a situation that help us learn to accept it them?" Um, uh, Juan says, no, respect its right to be, just as you respect your right to be. Brendan says, understand, LOL. Um, Rurik uh, is asking me a private question. Uh, I don't know if you really want that to be private, Rurik. Um, Robin says, so rather than put ourselves into the situations, it's okay to just realize they occur and just accept that they occur. Okay, so um, I want to try and I want to try and define accept. Um, as as easily as possible, um, which is that um, when okay, let's just take a hot button issue of today, or it's really been for a while, but like abortion. Okay, different people have different feelings about abortion, and you can feel that abortion is wrong, or you feel that abortion is right. Um, there really isn't a right or wrong answer for that. Um, but until you can accept that the other person's answer is okay for them and your answer is okay for you, you are stuck in a battle with that person perpetually. You don't have to change your opinion of the matter, but you just have to let go of the, of the need for, um, conflict and accept that that other answer is also a part of yourself. That's also something that's inside of yourself. Okay, so you guys are talking a lot here. Let me see what you guys are saying. Uh, Kevin says, as Yoda would say, listen to the force, abide in the force. <laughs> uh, Robin agree. I mean, uh, Juan agrees with what Robin said. Um, Alex says, just because you accept that rape occurs doesn't mean that you have to be a rapist and conflict. Now, I mean, and rape, rape is probably even more... Um, difficult than than abortion in some ways since it's you know very directly violent to a grown-up person who we could know um and but there but there is that nature in each of us on some deep level of being that of being that rapist you know of being the um the murderer of being the uh torturer we all have that inherent in our consciousness just as we have love and acceptance forgiveness all of those things are a part of our consciousness um, and and as alex says we don't need to act upon them but we do need to accept them and we do need to integrate them and and, and cease being in conflict with them um Robin says, when the answer inside causes negative feelings, though, does one continue to put themselves into a situation that caused the feeling until one is able to simply accept that it is? This is a really important question, um, and one that there, are, that there are several different answers out there, too. Um, some people would suggest that, yeah, you should just, like, push yourself and push yourself until you, until you are okay with it. That's sort of the um, Scientology approach to things, the L. Ron Hubbard, you know, where you just, like, continue imagining something that's unpleasant until you no longer feel that way about it. I'm not sure that that's the best way. I almost feel like um, accepting that you are not quite there with accepting is almost better than <laughs> trying to force yourself to accept something that you don't feel an acceptance to. And rather see it as an ideal, as a goal, 
um, rather than something that you need to feel like if you cannot fully do it right now, that you need to feel badly about yourself. You know, so I'm I'm saying yield even to the, you know, the process of yielding if it doesn't happen right away. Um, so, and Juan's being sweet to me. Um, so Al Alex points out that you have to accept your own character and so-called flaws. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you need to you need to just accept that they are and 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 not um, resist them. Uh, and, and which again doesn't mean that you have to, to like indulge them either but just but just accept that they're there and that you're and that you're on a path and the path may result in eventually all of them being extinguished or some of them may remain through your life and it's just simply something that you need to um uh, open yourself to releasing anxiety over Brendan says, with the rapist, I can see the victim and I can see the pain in the rapist that, dro that something drove him to that path. Both are human and both are hurt. Yes. Right. I mean, you know, uh, someone who's someone who's received all the love that they deserve is not going to to hurt another person. So, I mean, that person is, you know, pitiable on some level. We don't have to f forgive them their actions. Um, or allow them to continue doing it, but of course, you know that person's very sad and very upset. And and our, in ourselves, when we when we behave in a way that we feel is beneath us, or that we you know that we should be better than that, that the same is true. You know, we're we're flawed, and we haven't received all that we deserve. You know, all the love and all the support and all the um, encouragement, and so. We don't always uh, manage to succeed at the level that we'd like to succeed with everything. Um, Alex says, uh, an alcoholic who knows that he's an alcoholic can choose not to drink. Um, and, Al and Alex says, an alcoholic who refuses to accept his alcoholism is trapped in it. One says, right on. Um, yes. Or an alcoholic who acknowledges that they're an alcoholic and continues to drink anyway is also trapped in it. <laughs> um, the, <laughs> yeah, um, the, the main thing about this path, though, is about accepting the, the alcoholic and the rapist and the murderer in yourself and not worrying about others at all right now. Juan says, many of us are content living in false illusions we construct. Absolutely. And, you know, we continue to construct them. And the thing is, to keep, keep in mind, most of those false illusions were not actually constructed by ourselves. They were constructed by the experience of life. You know, even if we even if we made some conscious choices or what appeared to be conscious choices about those things, largely they're not, at, you know, really in our control at all. They're simply just the, the the motion of the universe forward. Alex says, so Jason, in a sense, living without limitations, knowing that we could be and do anything imaginable and even things we can't imagine. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the essentially the the state of um, enlightenment that you're moving towards, right? That you're that there's nothing that's outside of your um, the outside of possibility for you. Brendine says, at any moment, we have that potential to be anything good or bad. Yeah, I reversed it, but she said bad or good. But um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we can we can make things, we can make our life um, uh, heavenly, or we can make it hellish very easily. And at, at any time, any of us can do that. I mean, there are so many stories about um, you know, a, a religious uh, teacher or, and there, there's even a couple that are in the Bible with Jesus where, um, you know, there's this, this, uh, you just, you just become angry all of a sudden and you do something that uh, doesn't fit with the rest of your, of your, of what you're teaching and doing. And, um, you know, that's it. That's in all of us. It's, it's in everybody. There's no, um, there's no need to feel badly about it. 
Alex says that clarifies a lot. So um, I think that we're, I think that I, I've equipped you guys for this path as well as I can. So I just want to ask if there are any other questions before we um, end for today, because my, uh, my daughter is actually going out and I want to say goodbye to her before she goes off with other grown-ups. Um, so any questions? Ah, uh, Rurik says, in my current view, acceptance risks taking a passive stance and, and uh, dampen anger and desire for revenge, which sometimes are necessary to make some things right. How do we reconcile this? Well, that is the challenge of this path and, and of the of all of the paths, Rurik, in general, is that, um, you know, and the, this kind of goes to what, what Robin was saying earlier, that, you know, there's a, sometimes this challenges us at a very basic level to accept things and if if it's not possible it's just it's just going to tear you up even more to try and so just simply work the path as it is and um you know as as things move along you may find it easier or you may not you know um right and Alex points out if if Rurik is accepting everything, he'll also be accepting his anger and desire for revenge. So I mean, and that's ab absolutely true. I mean, all that is that is a something inside that is coming up as a result of those things, and you need to accept both. So, you know, I want to just point out that the rest of these paths there are, I think nine of them left or something. Um, are all going to be challenging, you know, but at the same time without as much drama. So, but they're all basically going to be, you know, touching upon various aspects of divine consciousness and um, they become more rarefied as we go along. And you know, so ultimately the, you know, the last one is, is pretty simplistic, but um, they're, they're, they're going to be areas of consciousness that aren't, you know, our normal human consciousness. And so, you know, just work with them as, as you can and, and don't feel like there's a, um, uh, you know, a reward or punishment for doing it right or wrong. Um, Alex says, thanks very much for everything. Um, he thinks his experience is going to be a lot clearer now. Uh, Kevin says, thank you for an awesome lesson, Jason. We look forward to seeing you again in the near future. May the force abide within us all till then. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Um, uh, Brendine says, thank you so much, Jason. Very good class. Uh, Rurik said, this was very high quality broadcast. Thanks. Well, you have, you have, um, uh, Brendusa to thank for that uh, a lot. Um, cause she helped me to get the, uh, the new router that's making, things broadcast a lot clearer. I'm, I'm pretty stunned at how much better it is. Um, and uh, Robin says, thank you. Thank you, Jason Chow. Everyone enjoy your week. Juan says, absolutely wonderful class. Thank you again for taking the time to share your understanding. Um, some people thanking Brindusa and uh, everyone. Uh, it's, it's always great to see you guys and I'm going to go ahead and end the meeting now. <laughs> uh, so I'll see you. Oh, it's going to be two weeks because I have to work next Sunday. So, but um, I think that'll be good for this, this path anyway. Um, hope with the hopefully I'll we'll we'll do more and more weekly ones since the quality of this is getting easier to deal with. Um, so see you soon.